I think him changing his mind three times in a couple of weeks, and then even to, in order to say unequivocally there was legal authority to require Tony Blair to secretly sign a document saying that Iraq was in material breach and not to report any of that to the cabinet is so extraordinary. And by the way, I see that both Tony Blair and he said the cabinet were given the chance to ask questions. That is untrue. I was stunned by his advice, but as I've said, I thought, in the teeth of war, the Attorney General of the United Kingdom coming to the cabinet to give legal advice, this is a very serious, monumental thing, and that's his advice. And I'm very surprised, but we must accept it. That was my view. Now, you've now had the benefit of seeing the earlier advice he'd given, his formal advice to the Prime Minister of the 7th of March, which is a much fuller document looking at more than one option. Do you think that it would have actually changed the Cabinet's decision if they had been given a chance to see that advice of the 7th of March? I think people would have thought it was much more equivocal and risky and wanted to be more sure and, let it, and less and less certain. And the other thing, I didn't know till Elizabeth Wilmhurst resigned and it was in the press, that both the Foreign Office legal advisers had said there was no legal authority. I think we should have been told that.